the show. I hope you've been watching all this week. We've been having a lot of fun rebroadcasting our series, 30 Things Everyone Should Know. But before we begin, let's take some questions from the audience. Please raise your hand if you have one. OK, right over there. Hi, Martha. Hi. My name is Christiana. I'm from Trinidad, and I'm here with my friends. We all go to the French Culinary Institute. Oh, excellent. And we're studying pastry. And we were wondering if you had any advice for pastry students. Well, I think that um, if you are doing baking and pastry, uh, to follow the recipes is a good thing uh, when you start out because baking is a science. I'm sure they've told you this already. And exact measurements are, are pretty essential when you're doing cakes and uh, pastries. Um, it's important to measure correctly, use the finest ingredients. And then once you're, you become proficient, then you can start experimenting. What's your favorite thing to make? <laughs> oh, taking the. Um, we're doing puff pastry now, and I enjoy that. Oh yeah, a lot. I do too. Yeah, it's a lot oh, of fun. It's so much fun. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank good you. luck to all of you. That's great. Another question. Hello, Martha. Hi. I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you. And it's a privilege to be here today. My question is on Rowenta irons. Uh, way back, you always used a Rowenta iron. I'm inquiring about the new one that they have, the perfect Rowenta iron. Are you familiar is with that? Is this the one with the water container beneath? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, yes, I have that. I uh, have <laughs> in my do. laundry room, and it works very, very well. Okay. So you don't have to keep refilling it as you steam. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's great. Yes. OK, thank it's you great. so Worth much. It's great. Worth the investment, thank yes. You. There it is right there. And we have a lot of laundry in our laundry room. You should see const constantly ironing napkins and table linens and, yes, bedding. Hi, Martha. My name is Sandy, and I'm with my family. Um, we're from Brookfield and Washington, Connecticut. Oh, great. Nice. And I actually had a question about your dogs. I was admiring them in the pictures downstairs, and I heard that chows were kind of aggressive. And I was wondering if you had a hard time training them, and are they good with strangers? Well, uh, it depends on uh, the breed breeder of the chow, uh, what the bloodline is. And I looked and looked and looked before I got Paw Paw. And uh, I was looking for uh, a dog that I could show, because I really wanted to do the show circuit. And Paw Paw comes from a fine line of gentle chows. Uh, at one time, chows had that reputation, but less and less now, because they are being bred for more of their genteel qualities, their beauty and their and they're good nature. They're a wonderful breed, and they love children, most of them. But again, all there's the, each dog is a dog, and uh, you have to uh, treat them as dogs and also as members of the family and train them well. Chows are almost untrainable, <laughs> but uh, if they're a good chow, they will obey and be loyal and not obsequious and just the nicest pet. I love my they're chow. Adorable. Papa. Have, have you won any ribbons? Oh yes, oh yes. He went to. He even went to uh, Westminster in the at uh, Madison Square Garden. He went, I think, twice, and he did. He did very well. He's a great dog. Thank you. Another question. Well, thank you very much. Um, I could just stand here all day asking questions, but we want to get to our 30 things. Samantha Meyer from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, sent us a letter asking us to teach her mom how to take better photographs. So we invited Samantha, her mother and her brother to our studio for a lesson with expert photographer Bill Abronowitz. Bill shot many of the Martha Stewart Living magazine covers and many of the editorial stories inside, uh, so he was the perfect teacher. Take a look at the letters Samantha wrote. Martha, my mother loves taking pictures, but she just needs help. Here's Bernadette Peters. That man without a head is my brother. I was so excited to have my picture taken with Dan Quayle. That's me behind the elbow. And she doesn't do so well with grandchildren either. There's her finger. Martha, my mom really needs some help with her snapshots. <laughs> so, so Bill's gonna um, tell us what he thinks Joyce is doing wrong. Uh, the, the first thing is that you're probably getting nervous because you're meeting these celebrities. So I'm gonna encourage you with all of these photographs just to simply take a deep breath let it out, <laughs> and then take the photograph. <laughs> With every camera comes a manual. So read the manual. And we're going to show you how to do some photographs on a very simple camera. But the manual is something you can sit down with and uh, study in an hour or certainly in, a, in an evening 
and the troubleshooting guide will help you with a and, lot and of the solutions. And this little HP camera is, it's a pretty good little camera. It's a pretty, I yeah. just put my memory stick in, and I was practicing with this one this morning. Right. And it's, it's got a big screen on the back to see things easily, and, in, and it has help that will appear on the screen. So with each function, with each button, oh. you'll be able to learn what you're doing as you go. Okay. So, um, so what are some tips? We so, some, some of the besides some of the tips, taking the deep breath, some of the tips that uh, <laughs> I'm going to encourage you to pay attention to is to learn about a little bit about composition. These are some photographs that I took of my kids. Um, to imagine that there's a crosshair through the photograph and mm -hmm. compose that's in quadrants yeah. or in pieces rather than dealing with the whole thing. So that's nice because you have the water and the sky just cutting the picture in half. In half, and, and then he dividing is, it a little more. Right, he's right there. Or to do it into thirds. Mm -hmm. Is also another okay. thing. Oh, beautiful. That's and a beautiful picture. Yeah. Then to also to learn how to let things just happen. Don't try to force the, the subject. I mean, there's a lot of times where you're just going to pose your subjects, but if you're photographing kids or animals, just let it happen. You know, feel free to move around. I love this. And where were you? Uh, this is in uh, Greece, on Patmos. It's gorgeous. Greece. Thank you. So why don't we come on down, okay. Martha? Okay, we're we're going to set up a little snapshot. Martha, why don't you okay. sit? Come on on this side. Robert, go behind. Joyce, we're going to come over here, and again, this, this HP camera has a very big viewfinder. It's got a two-inch viewfinder. It's got, you put your wrist, guard, wrist mm -hmm. strap on, back up a little bit. And a couple of things that you're going to do is you're setting up. You're going to try to just compose. Again, think about the quadrants. Watch what's going on behind their heads. Okay. All right, your strobe is all set. Are we in? Just, ready, ready set. one, two, three. All right, good Thank snapshot. Nice to be home good. with me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and by the way, everyone in the audience gets one of these cameras. Oh. <laughs> Are we going to see the picture? Oh, oh look. Yeah. That's fabulous. All our heads are there. Um, the looks so good. The color looks really pretty. You see the nice cupboard on one side. That's a beautiful can, composition. I pay attention to what's going on in the edges. But then assume that you can take a little bit off. If you, it's better to leave a little too much than not enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so really, listen to what Bill has to say. He is the expert. <laughs> Bill really helped Samantha's mom improve her camera skills. And he helped all of us, too. We'll be right back. Next, Martha shows legendary singer Carly Simon how easy it is to create a simple, stunning flower arrangement. And later, Martha takes a couple of Girl Scouts under her wing and makes the most unbelievable chocolate chip cookies. Stay with us. Carly Simon loves beautiful things, and she's a romantic like I am, so I was really excited to have her help me make a flower arrangement. Look at this. Wouldn't you like to just put this on your table? or a row of these down your table. It's so easy to make. Um, and we have these nice, square, inexpensive glass containers. So and you have a piece of ribbon, too. So what we're doing is making a little seasonal color decoration on the container. You can do this with, with any uh, container, but this rectangular one this is very easy. And this is double stick tape, Carly. Do you ever use double stick for anything? I'm so relieved that you've allowed me to do this in the future. <laughs> Let's see. Right, I don't have it. Oh, yeah, here. yes, you do. Right, yes, yes you do. Sir. We would never not give it to you. So then just pull the ribbon over the double stick tape, just tight like that, so it stays. Oh, so you put the double stick tape just. Yeah, on one end, yeah, and then pull the other one over it. And then you take the little narrower ribbon like this and tie it around and tie it on top of the uh, unstuck part. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Of course, mine will never, That's, ever look yes, like it will. yours. Here, here's this thing. Now, just turn this over this way. Okay. And, oh, but it's not even. Sorry, just, you can just even it out. Okay. And then tie this. I'm going to need your finger, and you can borrow mine. And then just tie it into a knot or a bow or whatever. Yeah. And then okay. here's a pair of scissors. Oh, you have a pair there. You can just snip that off or tie a bow if you'd like. And then always add, uh, always, if you're doing this at home or, or for a party or anything, always use a little bit of, I call it flower food, and uh, this is called cut flower food, uh, because 
that will help prolong the life of your beautiful flowers. And uh, this was inspired by a beautiful bouquet that I received from a friend, uh, lamb's ears, viburnum, um, these little flowering kales. Do you grow those in your garden? Yes, I do. Aren't they pretty? They're and they're, so and they're pretty. in the garden yes. even now. They're blooming yes, they... and ranunculus. And they're all very beautiful. Um, Karen Bussen uh, was the uh, original designer of this particular bouquet. So, so thanks. Uh, we've borrowed your design and we're making uh, something similar. Uh, but I love doing flower arrangements, and I like unusual colors of flowers. And these are the flowering kales, which are uh, out in the garden right now. And uh, you say that you grow these, too. I grow kales, and I, and I love the combination of kale and... and uh... Now, is the plural of kale kales? Well, I, no, I think you just say kale. Kale, yeah, like yeah. sheep. Flowering kale, not like yeah, like Flowering I have a lot kale. of kale. I have a lot of sheep. Yes, that's right. I don't. <laughs> I don't have a lot. I don't have yeah. I don't. And I have and ranunculus is ranunculi. Ranunculi. Yes, see, she can do that. I can't do that. No matter what. <laughs> the more flowers and the tighter the bouquet. You see, mm, that's the you. style of this one. No, well, nothing lanky. And you just oh, and then I hold mine me. together. Uh, another trick I learned from a from a wonderful florist, Michael George. I use these ponytail clear elastic bands that you buy at the drugstore and you just put this around the stems and this holds it you don't see them at all and it makes a very compact bouquet just make sure that you slide it up that way nothing falls apart when you finally insert this whole gorgeous thing into the container and if you put a row of these down your table it would be so beautiful yeah, I'm and then feeling you, and really then, inferior now. No, no, no. Then you cut it after you put the rubber bands on. You can cut the whole thing. No, I didn't start right. And uh, you, can, but yours is different. Every well, single flower arrangement is different. This is a summer version of the arrangement Carly and I made. We used colorful mini spider gerberas, which are from Martha's Flowers. You can go on our website uh, for more information. And we used hosta leaves and a few hypericum berries. Uh, it's a really pretty arrangement. Stay with us. Next, Girl Scouts from Martha's hometown of Nutley, New Jersey, help her make the most delicious chocolate chip cookies. And later, a little bit of decadent living. Desperate Housewives hunk Ricardo Chavira learns how to eat a lobster. And Martha calls in an expert to demonstrate the fine art of opening a bottle of champagne. Don't go away. I grew up in Nutley, New Jersey, and last November we had a Nutley reunion show. I invited some Nutley Girl Scouts to help me make chocolate chip cookies. A few assisted me while others made cookies for the audience in the prep kitchen, entertained by Access Hollywood's Billy Bush. Watch this. I think if you know how to make these great cookies, you can get through life happier and better. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's true. This is Jordan, and this is Jessica, and welcome to the show. You have, you're already quite an accomplished Girl Scout of looking at your, what's the heart with the horse? That was for horse lovers where we went to a stable and we rode horses and we learned about them and we learned how to ah. groom them and how to take care of you them. You have to come up and visit my horses someday, okay? They look okay. like the one on that little badge. And you have just become a Girl Scout. Yes. You've just moved up yeah. from brownies, huh? Yeah. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. Oh, Very good. Excited. I need a cup of sugar, please. Yeah. And we're going to make the really best, best chocolate chip cookies. And uh, their recipe is uh, in our baking handbook. So right in the mixer, one cup of butter. You can break me one egg and one egg white. Okay. okay. Do you know how to do that, separate an egg? Um, I'm not. You can try. Yeah. <laughs> Just one egg is in the bowl, and then add an egg white to the bowl. No yolk. Aha. And now I'm going to mix. Oh, a half a cup of dark brown sugar and one cup of, and I'm spilling. I would already <laughs> fail my badge. Do you have a cooking badge at, right at uh, Girl Scouts? I'm, you have several, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I would think so. I remember getting all my badges. I worked very hard at Girl Scouts. It was really fun. Now, you can sift uh, the dry ingredients, but sifting uh, to us nowadays is sometimes just <laughs> mixing them with a whisk. One, so we need two cups of flour. I can do this. Yes, you can. You're doing it. Just hold it over the bowl. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And so you can put it in your hand, too. Just throw this away and just use it in your hand. Grab the egg yolk. Don't let the egg yolk go. Just the white. 
That's perfect. <laughs> and now you can put the egg yolk in there. <laughs> Wash your hands. <laughs> we missed a little bit of egg white. So we need two cups of flour. Here's the, here's the cup. And you know how to dry uh, measure? Yeah. Okay, so dip in. Dip in and cut off the top with this. Okay. Yeah. Just on the flat edge, yep. That's good, so just put that in the bowl. And one more. Dip way down, yeah, so you get a full, yeah. Now you just get that top off. And it's, it's secret is to hold this sideways, like this, watch. And just sweep it off, see? Okay. okay. And one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. These are really great cookies because they are um, very light and very crunchy and very soft and very chocolatey all at the same time. They're really, really good. So then I just add this to the mixture. And now we have a lot of Girl Scouts in the kitchen with Wes and Angie, and they're learning. How you doing, Wes, with the girls? Oh. Wes? Wes? Yeah. Can you hear me? Good. How are the girls doing? Doing good. We got butter and sugar creaming. We're ready for the dry ingredients and the eggs. Excellent. So they're busy, busy. And we're using Nestle's Toll House cookie, uh, cookies. Nestle's Toll House. Those are my favorite cookies. Like Chocolate chips? chips? Yeah. They are, really, and truly? Yes. Oh, good. Nestle's will be very happy to hear that. And everyone in the audience is going to be getting a bag of Nestle's chocolate chips. Okay. Yes. Throw that in. Oh, use a little spoon. Okay. Be invent. You have to get it out. Okay. She said it won't come out. Use your finger, whatever. <laughs> okay, now mix this in like that and sift that up for me. Martha, what is your favorite thing to bake? My favorite thing to bake? Pies. I really love making pies. Do you know how to make a good pastry? No. Not, not yet? No. But you'll learn because that's good. And now I can just take that and add this gradually to the butter and sugar mix. Oops. Martha. Yes. You know, it feels really cool to have somebody that's known all over the world to come from my town. It, I know. It's, it's very yeah. exciting. Well, you have a lot of things. Did you see that Annie Oakley yeah. comes from Nutley? Did you know that? Yeah. You did. Yeah. Oh, good. And uh, there are other great authors, and you have uh, congressmen, and you have, you have a lot of famous people. Yeah. And now I think we have to add how much of this? Do you remember? 12 ounces. So this is, I think, exactly the right amount. And then just put those in really fast and go like that and like that, and that's it. Okay. You don't want to break up the chocolate <laughs> chips, do we? No. So that's it. And uh, oh, what a beautiful mix. These chocolate chip cookies, to get them to be an even size, use a scoop. This is like a two ounce scoop. And just try to make it, you know, one okay. scoop and then put it right on a sill pad. Okay. okay, you try. Now, being a Girl Scout in Nutley, New Jersey, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Uh, oh. Too much. Yeah. It's too much fun? <laughs> oh, it's too much. No, too yes. much. No, just use, the side of the, just use the side of the bowl. How many of your friends would you say are Girl Scouts? What percent of your girlfriends? Uh, Say, if you have 10 girlfriends, how many are Girl Scouts? Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, a lot? Let's see, 10% uh, ten percent, ten friends. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably 98%. Really, 98? Oh, that's good. So, pretty good. It's a wonderful organization. I had so much fun being a Girl Scout. I really loved it. Here, you can finish the whole Whole tray, both of you. That's good, that's good. Just press it in hard, and then you make a nice round dome right here. Now, um, I see that you have a lot of badges, and you yes. are just starting. Have you any badges at all, Jordan? No. Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> Today, each Girl Scout is getting a community service badge because you have been working so hard, so long, and we have a taste of your hard work for the audience. I think this is really great. And the hard work for the audience is a chocolate chip cookie being passed out by all the Girl Scouts to all of you in the audience. Here, you want to taste? Here you are. No, six. Only six. So that's what you're getting. See that? You'll find the full recipe in my baking handbook or on our website at MarthaStewart.com. And let me tell you, the audience went nuts for the cookies. You must make them. We're going to be right back. Next, Martha and Desperate Housewives Ricardo Chavira indulge in lobster and champagne. And later, get ready to tantalize your taste buds. Martha and Ricardo cook up an amazing bolognese sauce. Stay with us.
Eating lobster from the shell can be a very messy proposition, unless you know the correct way to do it. Ricardo Shavira helped me demonstrate how to eat a lobster. Take a look. Once they come out of the pot, while they're just cooled a little bit so you can hold them up, I always clip off the tips of the claws. Ooh, that's and look nasty. How, no, it's not nasty. That's no, just kidding. that's just <laughs> the water. <laughs> it's going to get nastier if you think that's nasty. Oh, my God. Wait till he sees the green stuff. But if you do this, then your plate isn't going to be soupy. You know, if you put it on the plate and then you cut the lobster open, it's always going to drip water. So do this ahead of time, and you won't. Now, that's for you. Oh. So put that on your plate over there. Okay. And I'll do one for me. Yeah. Now, just don't, don't start dismembering it yet. No, no. I... But uh, lobsters used to be so plentiful that um, they, were, they were considered junk food. And uh, they were, people just didn't even eat them until finally they discovered that they were really delicious. And Maine is the largest producer of uh, lobsters in the United States. Uh, I think second only to Nova Scotia on the East Coast. So here's my lobster. It's okay. like a big crawfish. Yep, so here, we'll just move this stuff away because it gets okay. a little bit messy. So now, th this is the way I do it. Okay. Uh, this is one leg. So I twist the leg off, just twist, okay, and put that aside. Twist off the other leg gently. Okay. Don't even, th these are almost shedders. They're um, oh, okay. soft shells. Lobsters shed their shells like 40 times in the first year and then a couple times uh, a year after that and they grow um, generally what you get in the store is about a pound and a half uh, or pound and a quarter lobster. Then you twist off the tail. Just gently twist. Okay. And pull it out gently so that you get all the meat. <clears throat> no, How you that's doing? Nasty. <laughs> now if you think that's nasty, just wait. <laughs> Not nasty at all. It is utterly delicious. So you never really have eaten a lobster like no, this? I, I mean, I have. But, pull off but all not, the little yeah. legs. They just pull them off. Okay, just pull all these off. Yeah, pull right. them off. These, uh, these are good just to chew on. And, um, and then you take the carapace off the body. Oh, and this green stuff. Do you have green stuff in yours? I haven't gotten there yet. That's the tamale. That's really good. A lot of people love that tamale, and a lot of people don't love it. So you just put that on your other plate. It's, it's, I'm, I'm... And then, yeah, you're doing well. Yeah, just pull this part, yeah. Uh. These are the antennae. <laughs> you can wash your hands after you do this part. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, okay. So now put the shell over here. Okay. And put the body over here. Okay. These, there's a lot of meat in there if you, if you look for it. And that's the tamale, which you got all messy over here. Wash your hands. Okay. Wash your hands. <laughs> I always keep damp rags around. And then, oh, here's, the, here's a really good method for getting, take your fork like this and put the fork this way under, yep, right under the top shell of the right. tail and just pull gently. Oops, and you'll get the whole tail out. Look at that. Oh, the yeah. whole tail comes out. Just twist got a little it. bit. Got you got it, it see? Got it. A lot of people struggle with the tail and there's no reason to struggle at all. And just put your shells over okay. there. And then you have that. And then to get the claws, twist the claw. This is the claw. Mm -hmm. This is the thumb. And twist it from the knuckle. And uh, it's a little tough on your fingers. And then you can use any number. <laughs> we have every kind of nutcracker. I'm used to the old-fashioned nutcrackers. And these are such soft shells that you really hardly need a nutcracker. I'm still stuck at the knuckle. Oh, just, OK, oh, that's good. OK. Yeah, now take the little knuckles, and you're going to take one of your little lobster forks or fish forks and just pull the meat out. Look at that beautiful knuckle meat. A lot of people prefer knuckle meat to all other meat. Are you going to taste it? Um, okay. Yeah, just take, a, take that and dip it into the butter. All right. Mmm. Now you like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank heavens. And then just pull the thumb off, crack, crack the, um, the claw itself, and you have a beautiful piece of claw meat, and there. So you, that's the way to eat a lobster. After we got the meat out of the shells, it was time to crack open the champagne. Wine expert Per Holmberg shared his masterful techniques. Watch. So here you have, how cold should champagne 45 be? 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, <clears throat> normally you get that for three hours in the refrigerator or 30 minutes on ice. Oh, okay, in the ice. And never put it in the freezer because the pressure that's inside the bottle will mount and pop it out. Could break, yeah, and so. also could break the bottle. 
Absolutely. Right? Yeah. 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 Don't do that. Will, will it ruin the chef? If it gets frozen, will it ruin it? Uh, you destroy some of the fish. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's a mess to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. So. All that broken glass yeah. in your <clears> freezer, you don't want that. The normally you do this under a towel to catch the cork flying out. Can can we each open one and follow you along? Yeah, away? absolutely. And It'd be we'll great. Yeah. And All that's right. your glass to in case it it uh, fizzes too much. Okay. 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 So. To wash down the lobster? So. Okay. <laughs> oh, lobster and champagne, how good. So, normally you remove the foil, but the Dom Perignon has uh, a little tighter foil, so you can... Oh, find the, find, what do you call that little ring? Uh, the, um, the bagel, the uh, bogle, I think? Yeah, okay. So, so now you twist this off. Yeah, I'm ready. Just, <laughs> oh, he's, well, you, you look little, how fast little, he little is, look fast. how fast. You You're rushing your it, Ricardo. Keep your thumb on the cork. <laughs> keep your thumb on the cork. Okay. So there you go. Because we want, don't we want just the sigh of a woman? That's right, we absolutely. We want the sigh of a woman. You don't want to pop. No. Okay. okay. Okay, do you know about that? Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. Because if you pop, the bubbles are going to go out and it's going to be very flat. Okay. Okay. So. So, we're on here. We remove the basket. I'm, a, I'm ahead of you. I'm just rushing away. This is live TV, Pierre. The sigh All right, of a woman. Too slow, okay. <laughs> you, okay. Um, steady grip around the cork and you spin the bottle. Yeah. I have to do it this way. Is it okay if I use this? Yep. Just keep it. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Hardly a sound. There you go. And we didn't waste any. That's the most important thing That's to right. me is that it doesn't go all over the place. And then if you the tilt your glass and pour oh, it like yes. this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very important. Bob. Less bubbles. Yeah. Are you holding it? Yes, sir. Okay. Mmm. Three bottles of Dom Perignon. Mm. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and what a lunch it was. Champagne can be served as an aperitif. It can be served as a cocktail, as a dessert wine, and also as a first course wine. And I just love it so many, many different ways. Don't go away. Up next, Martha and Ricardo make an amazing bolognese sauce. And later, our 30 Things Countdown continues with great tips for doing a perfect load of laundry. Stay tuned. Ricardo Shavira helped me make number eight of our 30 Things, a simple bolognese sauce. Take a look. You start with three tablespoons of olive oil good olive oil, beautiful green olive oil, and uh, you add your, oh, you have to add that next. You add, start with your vegetables. Now look, this is so beautiful, grated carrots. Okay. Uh, very finely chopped celery and very finely chopped red onion. Now see, I would have jalapenos like right over here. Okay, but that's not Italian though. Uh, well, and, yeah, yeah, it's yours and you can do that and no problem. You can. Once you know how to make the real bolognese, then you add all those other things. <laughs> You're changing the recipe. <laughs> so saute that, and it looks like this when it's all sauteed, and it's soft, and then you add a quarter of a pound of ground pork and a third of a pound of ground beef. And get this fresh from the butcher. It's very important to have really good lean meat, and cook that. Oh, until the meat all falls apart and it cooks in with those vegetables. And then you go over, we have it all done in nice little swap outs. Here it's all cooked and you add, look how pretty that looks, add two cups of whole tomatoes, canned tomatoes. And if you have uh, fresh tomatoes, you can use fresh, you can use the canned whole tomatoes, or yeah, if you, yeah. do you can your own tomatoes every year? Uh, <laughs> yes, sure. All the time. All the time. All the time. And you cook this in, and then you add two tablespoons of tomato paste. Well, would you just turn the flame down under those vegetables a little, sure, Ricardo, if you sure. don't mind? Um, yeah. Is it this one? Yeah, that's, yeah, just turn it down to a simmer. Got it. And salt and pepper, and cook that down, and we have the finished one right here. See how easy? Oh, wow. It takes a very, very short time. Now, if you want to um, really um, just make this even a little bit richer, because remember, we have no butter in here, no cream. You can add a little bit of heavy cream, just a little, and that enhances the sauce. A lot of, a lot of chefs like to add that little bit of cream just to 
See how it gets creamy looking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very beautiful. Ready to top any kind of pasta. And we have some spaghetti already cooking for us. Okay. And we can, uh, want to drain that? Sure. Oh, well, here's another little good thing. Turn the cold water on first. Okay. Just let it run. Okay, and here, you pour that into the colander. In here, okay. Yeah. I put the cold water on because it, it uh, helps uh, cool the drain of your sink, and it also keeps the steam from uh, burning you, which is a good thing, don't you think? Uh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. But don't rinse the pasta. Okay. Very important. Okay. And here, you can put that wherever. Yeah, shake that out. And put this, mm, gorgeous. Oh, you've made pasta before. A couple of times. Is it one of your staple dishes? No. No? no. What is one of your staple dishes? Here, you can put that uh, here. Hamburgers. Oh yeah, you like making hamburgers? No, no, I just pick them up. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you guys. You don't cook at home, really? No, no, I do, actually. Uh, for my son, it's quite fun. Mm, there. Is that enough for you? For lunch? Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay. And then top that with your gorgeous bolognese. And you can grate some cheese. And this is one of the 30 things. If you know how to make this, you will be a hero in your house. And serve this with a salad, a really delicious endive and arugula salad. Fabulous. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? Yeah. This bolognese sauce is great over pasta for a family dinner or for entertaining. We'll be right back. Next, there really is a right way to load a dishwasher. Martha shows you how. Stay with us. A lot of people don't know how to load a dishwasher properly. And Ricardo Shavira was one of them. Watch this. Okay, so dishes themselves. We can start with the dishes. Sure. Uh, okay, so start with the big dishes. Okay. And, um, you, and you just load them here. This is for the big dishes here. This now, right here. It, yeah. Okay. It depends on what kind of dishwasher you have, too. Uh, never load bronze, pewter, cast iron, or wood in your dishwasher because they just won't, they won't take the heat. They won't no. take the, you know, they won't. The wood will split, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, the wood can split. So, um, and then you can layer in your bowls like this. Oh. Okay, so that's good. So these plates can go in, oh, they can go actually right there. Okay. Try to maximize the space to think ahead of time what you're doing so that you don't um, um, use up all the space all at once. So here, you can put these in. Where? Well, where would you put those? What did I just in say? In the sink and let them soak for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well here we have three rubber spatulas. This one can actually go in because it has a plastic handle. These have wooden handles, so I wouldn't put them in. Okay. I, I oftentimes see these in the dishwasher though, and they just don't last long. So they, they would I, definitely be in yeah. my dishwasher. So, I, so I've used the top rack sometimes and put these oh, things in the top okay. rack. And then glassware, uh, this is not fragile, so this is good in I here. I know this, this goes yeah. right here. Yep, no, it actually goes along here. You can put it right here, and then you can tighten this little thing and lock them in, see? Okay. Yeah, so that's good there. What about tall wine glasses? Would you put your, your these kinds of glasses in? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? I, I would hand wash them. Oh, okay, well, that's... these are actually dishwasher proof, and you can also ask the manufacturer or look on the box. These can go right here also. Mm. Uh, so I will do these if I don't have a lot of pots and pans clanking around. I will put those in the top. And this is tall enough for these. Okay. But uh, now the cups, they, they can go on that right side. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here you can wash that. Would that go in? No, this would not, because no. it's wood. Exactly. Bamboo. Uh -huh. What about this? No, it's wood. It's wood. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> now, uh, stainless steel, and we have some silver. Would you put those in the, in the same spot? Uh, no. No, because silver and stainless, uh, this will dent the silver. Uh, and they'll, it'll cause a reaction, the two metals. You never, ever put them next to each other. So you can uh, separate them. There, that's in there. These can go in here. I would keep the silver far away. You put the uh, forks. You can alternate them up and down if you like. They'll Why would cleaner. you do that? Well, they get cleaner. The, the, the spray comes up and it just... They're okay. not, the spoons won't spoon into each other, you know about oh, that Oh, yeah, okay. okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay. And then pots, if you're gonna put pots, and I love washing my pots in the dishwasher, because they come out so clean. Yeah. So I will use um, this, I will try to 
work it out so that it fits. Okay, that one will All go right. there. Um, and then put your soap in, and we, we're using Cascade. You can use the liquid or the powder. Uh, I like both, I just use whatever. And set it on the appropriate timing. And do you yeah, close, close that, close yep. Close this little thing, right? And close it up. Okay. And go See, away, that. and then uh, you will not. You will be one of the 59% of Americans that have dishwashers, automatic. Okay. So remember these tips when you're loading your dishwasher tonight. If you are one of those 59%, we'll be right back. Ricardo Shavira had one last thing to learn before he left our studio: how to do laundry correctly. Watch this. <laughs> so uh, we're separating laundry first. You have to separate the darks from the lights, the wools from the cottons, and you have to read the labels. If you have something expensive, and you know, jeans are now, if you're having a pair of custom jeans, are yours custom? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they're, they cost more than $100. So you want to be careful how you wash them, right? Or do oh. you send them to the cleaners? Yeah. Yeah, right. You don't have to if you know how to wash. So button the top button of the jeans. Always roll down the cuffs, if you have cuffs, and uh, put those in a pile. Now, sometimes don't you wash them inside out, too? Uh, you can, depending on, on the look of your jean. Okay. You know, some, some, and, but there's a new soap I'm going to tell you about a little later that you wash jeans with. It's for dark clothes, and it really doesn't give that washed out look oh, okay. if you have a dark pair. So make sure you also check all the pockets. Um, we have some socks here. Now these look like they have been washed and dried. Look at that, the same size. Look at what happened. They were put in the dryer. That is a no-no. You never put these kinds of socks in the dryer. Those are wool, right? Yeah, they're yeah. gonna get to be this big in a couple more washings. So I would always wash these separately in cold water and then hang them on a rack to dry. Uh, dark clothes, white clothes go into the white. Towels, towels, well you can put towels in with t-shirts if, uh, if they're old t-shirts, but if they're really nice t-shirts, don't put the towels in because they have a lot of lint. And I always wash my towels separately anyway, and oh. always. So here's a shirt, some white, white socks, which these are cotton, so they can go in with the cotton, but I don't throw those in the dryer. I just don't. Towels and another t-shirt. Okay, so that's all separated. And if you have delicates like underwear, um, uh, bras, panties, um, I have even a lot little, of those. little styles, <laughs> put them in a mesh bag, and these would be washed separately, um, unless they're cotton and they can be thrown in with the white cotton. Whites, if they're really dirty, pre-soak. Always pre-soak in cool water with a little bit of your detergent. And then uh, rinse it out and then throw them into the uh, washing machine. We have a front loader here and uh, we have a few delicates in the mesh bag that can go in. Um, T-shirt, turtleneck, a couple white towels, white jeans that are uh, all ready to go into the washer. And a red sock. And no red socks. Okay. Absolutely no red I've, socks. I've and Ricardo, Ricardo says he's done that. We don't want anything. Oh, this yeah. is great because you put the soap right in the top. And oh. You can use your Tide or you can use um, your Perseal. Perseal is a wonderful soap too. And you only need a quarter of a cup in this top loader. That's all, which is so efficient. So you just a quarter of a cup. And if you want, you can uh, put a little bit of fabric softener here, but these clothes don't need it. Uh, and shoes, whites need hot temperatures, so do it on the hottest temperature you can, and uh, once they're done, uh, put them into your dryer and you have a fantastic white laundry. Now, if you stain your clothing while you're traveling, here's a good thing to always have handy, a travel laundry pouch. So choose something that's uh, leak-proof, very important put in a little bit of Woolite, which is an all-purpose soaker and washer. Um, I always love to take this cosmetic stain remover with me. Uh, in case you get a little lipstick on something or a little bit of makeup around the neck of something. Uh, a lint remover, very important, and that'll fit right down in here too. Tide to go, good for those uh, stains, instant stain removal. A stain eraser, another good tool. Some Q-tips to use with your cosmetic stain remover. Um, a little rag for blotting and, and rubbing. Uh, of course, a little travel sewing kit for those lost buttons or, or um, lost uh, fasteners. This is always great to have for sinks in the hotel rooms. Just a little stopper. 
and uh, then you can soak things overnight, your hosiery or your underwear. And this is one of those nice little mesh bags. It's also nice to wash things in. And that's it. You just zip this up, tuck this into that non-existent extra corner in your suitcase. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. And it is your travel laundry pouch. It's a very good thing. I do hope you enjoyed today's show. And if there's something you missed, all the information is on our website at MarthaStewart.com. Please join us tomorrow as we conclude our week of 30 things everyone should know. Our guest is one of my personal favorites, all my children, Cameron Matheson. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.